All right, Legacy Church, we're going to get started this morning. Why don't we all stand to our feet today? Amen. I don't know about you. I am so, so excited to be in the house of the Lord with all of you. This morning, before we start singing any songs, what I want to do is, number one, I want to tell you, man, without a doubt in my mind, I know deep in my spirit that God wants to move today, that the Holy Spirit wants to minister today. I believe we're going to see amazing things happen today. But this morning, before we do anything, we want to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. So I just want to invite you right now. Let's just begin to worship God. Just begin to tell him thank you. Come on, just begin to give him praise. Come on, come on. We can't be louder about anything else. Come on, give him glory. Put aside every distraction, every worry. Come on. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. Come on, tell them, I still believe in miracles today. I still believe in your wonder-working power, God. I still believe you're the God of revival, the God of breakthrough. We worship you, God. We praise you today. Survive when we pray to the God 
some grateful hearts in the house of God today. You may take your seats today, church. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you in advance, God, for all that you're about to do, Lord. Father, we know your spirit is here, God. We know you're moving in our midst already, Lord. God, we just thank you today. We thank you, Lord. We're overflowing with thankfulness to you today, God. Have your way, Lord. Help me sing it today, church. I've heard. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night. And they tell me that. You're pleased and then I'm never alone. Come on, would you all sing it out with me today? You're a good, good father. Come on. It's who you are. Yes, yes. come on. It's who you are. It's who you are. Thank you, Jesus, right now. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Let's sing that one more time, church. Come on. You're a good, good father. Yes. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, thank you for this new identity, Lord. Oh, and I.
you are, yes, you are perfect. You're perfect in all your ways. You never fail, you never fail. You're perfect in all your ways. I trust in your plan today. All oh, this love so undeniable I can hardly speak in this place so unexplainable I can hardly think in your call come on let's go deeper us remind who you need to remind today. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. One last time, church. You're a good, good father. Sing it. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Come on, I want to challenge you just to worship the Lord right now. Come on, just tell him, Lord, I know you're a good, good father. Come on. I know you're good. You've been good. You've been good. You've shown us how good you are. Come on, just tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Out of gratitude, out of love today. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. You're so good. You're so good. Even though we don't deserve, you're so good. Come on, he's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Come on, he's been faithful. He's brought us through so much. You've seen us through so much. And you're not finished yet. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am oh it's who I am it's who you are we wait for you we wait for you to walk in the room we wait for you Holy Spirit, we wait for you. We're waiting for a move. A move that only you can do. And I came for a miracle today. And I don't want to leave without my miracle today. Just waiting on you. We wait for you. We wait for you. Come on, let's get on our feet today. It's coming, it's coming. We wait for you. To walk in the room. Come on, we're taking our time today. We wait for you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We wait for you. We wait for you. To walk in the room. Sing it one more time. We wait for you. Come on. And we wait for you. And we wait for you. And we wait for you. Walk in the room. Oh, we're waiting for you. You told them to wait in the upper room. And we want an upper room encounter today. We wait for you. And I beseech thee, show us your glory. Shekinah glory come down, Shekinah. 
in an attitude of worship for a moment. An attitude of worship. Don't break away from it. Don't break away from it. Just stay in the moment. Father, we praise you. Come on, an attitude of worship. Father, we give you glory. We praise you right now. We give you glory. We're still waiting. We're not going anywhere, God. We're still waiting. We praise your holy name. We bless your holy name, God. We're right here, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. And Jesus told the disciples to wait. He said, don't leave. He said, wait. I'm sending the helper. I'm, send, I'm sending my spirit. But he said, wait. He told them, wait. Don't leave the city. He said, wait. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do. We praise you. Jesus said, wait. And what's important is what the waiting looked like. And the believers, the people of God all went to the upper room and you know what they did? They, they were praying. They said, God, we're waiting. God, we're here. God, we're anticipating. We're right here, Lord. We're not going anywhere. I want to tell you and I want to challenge you that while they were waiting for the move of God, that while they were waiting for the blessing that was promised, they weren't there with arms crossed. They weren't there just sitting, all right, I guess we'll wait. But there was a sense of anticipation. God, I want my blessing. God, I want what you promised. I want the power of God. I want the help from God. I want the peace of God. I want the spirit of God. You said, Jesus, you said, don't go anywhere. I'm here. And right now, like the song said, here we are standing in the presence of the Lord. 
You are in the, I can say it, this is holy ground today because we are in the presence of Almighty God right now. Whether you came ready or not, prepared or not, the Spirit of God is here, man. And I wish I could explain to you how badly God wants to break something in your life. I wish I could express to you how badly God wants to shake up your life today. And he says that my people will just wait, like Jesus called the disciples, if they'll just wait, but if they'll wait in prayer, if they'll wait in anticipation, if they'll just stay ready, God, come, Holy Spirit, come, I'm right here. And this morning, this is one of those moments, man. This is one of those times where God is saying to you, if you'll just press in, you'll just anticipate my presence, I will bless you. I will give you power. I will heal. I will break. And so this morning, I just want to invite you. We're going to sing these words, release the fullness. I want to, I'm going to be honest with you. This morning, man, before we all came, I was praying, God, show us your glory. God, I want to see your glory. God, take us deeper than before. That was my prayer, man, for this church. We're going to sing these words. Just stay open. Stay in the moment, God. I want my blessing. Lord, send me your spirit right now. So let's sing these words. Come on, release. Release the fullness. Come on, church. Of your spirit. Hands lifted. Come on. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Come on. Release the fullness of your spirit. Well, Shekinah glory come. God wants to renew hope right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God of my presence. God of my presence. God of my future. You write my story. You hold it all together. You hold it all together. God of my presence. Come on, God of my future. God of my future. Story. You write my story. You hold it on. You hold it all together. God of my blessing. God of my future. You write. You write my story. You hold. You hold it all together. God of my blessing. God of my
Give him praise. He's holding it all together right now. You hold it all together. Come on, give him praise. He still holds it all. God, amen. You may be seated today. Uh, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Uh, what an amazing worship service this morning. Yes, amen. I believe that God is with us. The presence of God is with us. God is doing some amazing things in our hearts and in our lives even now. Uh, praise God. I just have a couple of announcements as we move on. I did have a, a ministry meeting scheduled for this Sunday uh, coming up a week from today Sunday night we're gonna go ahead and reschedule that uh, it's the Sunday before Memorial Day we're gonna reschedule that we'll put it we'll give you the, uh, further information later um, so but there's a couple of things taking place uh, during uh, next month right at the beginning of the month we have a, a three-day prayer and fasting taking place amen we're going to prepare for that, uh, praise God, and uh, at the end of those three days on that Sunday following, we have a very special guest speaker from the, uh, one of our uh, sister churches uh, in Madeira, Pastor Tim, will be with us, amen. So we're going to be ready, we're going to uh, prepare for God to help us, challenge our lives, speak to us, and just do some amazing things. And so, also, I want to mention that our main conference for our fellowship will be taking place in Fresno. Uh, that's going to be uh, the second week of July. So we encourage you to be a part of that. Um, and you will be blessed. And we'll have the dates available for you. And we'll have some announcements up for you as well. So that way you remember. But be a part of this conference. Let, let your life be challenged. We'll give you more information as time goes on. And again, if you're planning to go, please already set up your room so that way you can enjoy the conference. Amen. And the conference is always exciting because God does some, does some amazing things. You know, this morning I came and in the morning, and many of you may not be aware, but we do have a, a new ministry, and it's called Early Risers. And Early Risers, what it is, it's for those that want to come early to church. Amen. Everybody say early. Early. Amen. And we have some coffee, some uh, refreshments, some uh, sweets, and all kinds of stuff. And this morning, man, as soon as I got here, got me a little bread and got some coffee. Man, it was good. Amen. And so if you want to just come and fellowship right before the service, come we're going to extend the time we'll give you more information on that and we encourage you to come and just have a cup of coffee relax and just prepare yourself for the service uh get just get a little bit of caffeine in you unless you bring it from somewhere else but um it, it's a great ministry it's a great time to come and just prepare for the service and that you know one thing that it does yes it's a fellowship second um, of course, it's just connecting with one another. Second, it gets us here early. It gets us here early and um, it helps us to be here for prayer and it helps us to prepare for the service. Amen. And so if you want to be a part of that, we encourage you to uh, come.
Praise God, amen. So if you can uh, be, it's available for you. But this morning, I'm going to pick up the offering. In the book of Luke, in chapter 21, there's a scripture there, a story. Uh, I'll read it for you. It says, and as Jesus looked up, and he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury, he also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I, t I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. So this morning, we're going to give to God. Um, I just want to applaud you. I want to commend you. I want to thank you uh, for the pledges that were made uh, to keep our doors open. You know, uh, as you give to God, uh, what it does, it keeps our doors open. Do you want our, our church doors to close? Do you want our church doors to close? No. That's why we give. That's why we give to God. And the pledges that, that are given, uh, they're, they're there to take care of the different expenses it takes to run the house of God. Um, and the Bible talks about this woman here. She didn't have much, but what she had, she gave. And so today, I want to encourage you, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness to God in your giving. And because of your giving, uh, we're able to see God move in the lives of people. And so today, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to bless the offering. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your people. My God, I ask that you bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them for their faithfulness unto you. God, I pray for your church, this building, God, this temple. I ask that you will provide for this temple, God, this place. That you, that you will bless it, that we will continue to be a, a light in this community, in this neighborhood, God, in this city. God, bless the finances. Multiply it, God. Meet the need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. platform praise God yesterday we were able to go into uh, our community for a time of outreach to uh, uh, pass out uh, our flyers our um, inviting people into the house of God we had an amazing time I really want to th thank all those that participated we were able to uh, go to different places and talk to different people pray for some folks and also let them know that there's a church here and we just had a, an amazing time and we're going to believe God that God's going to use those flyers to bring these people to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bible, it's the Gospel of John, chapter 15. And today I want to continue on the second part of this message on the secrets of the vine. And I just pray that, that God will just help you today and that God will minister to you. This morning I was reading and I was talking, I was reading a story about the city of Lodi, the city of Lodi, which is down the street from here, not very far. You just go on the 99 and you'll run into it, right before Stockton, after Galt. There you go. 
You can't miss it. But it was talking about the city of Lodi that uh, since the 1800s, 1800s, almost 200 years, they've been growing grapes. It's been known for hundreds, uh, thousands of acres of grapes. I didn't know Lodi had that much grapes. I was just reading some uh, commentaries and talking about grapes throughout the, the world and the country. And there was, they spoke about Lodi. I go, I know where Lodi is at. I've been there before. And so it spoke about Lodi and how this city has, it produces a lot of grapes. And so there you go. So you didn't know that? You know that now. Uh, but here this passage of Scripture is talking about uh, the secrets of the vine. And Jesus here gives us this passage. Uh, here he speaks about uh, the vine, the grapevines. And so today I just pray that as you're here today that God will just speak to you and God will help you. And the book of John, chapter 15, and I'm going to read just four verses there. The first four verses of of John, chapter 15. Uh, So let me read it to you today. But if you have your Bibles, the gospel of John, chapter 15, in verse 1. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit... He takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in in me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word. And I ask God that you would help us, Lord, that you would speak to us today. And God, right now, we invite your spirit, God, that you would just transform us by your word today in the name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, so, here, it's a very simple scripture. Here, Jesus is comparing our lives and God Himself. To the grapevine. To a grapevine. And so today, the Bible says that here, Jesus says that Jesus is the vine. Amen. He is the vine. And you and I are the branches. God, the Father, is the vine dresser. Who's the vine dresser? The one that takes care of the vine, the fruit, that takes care of the crop. So the Bible says that Jesus is the vine, the main root. We're the branches, amen, and God the Father is the one that is the vine dresser. And so the Bible says that the fruit that God wants you and I to produce is the fruit that we may say, what, what, do you, what is the Word of God saying about fruit? Well, the fruit that God wants us to produce in our lives is not grapes, it's not apples and oranges, no, the fruit is the change that takes place in our, in our lives. Everybody say change. change. Amen. The fruit is the change that takes place in our lives. Amen. The, the fruit that, t- that God wants to see in our lives is the growth that takes place in, you, in our lives as Christians. Amen. Yes, the, the fruit also can become, uh, as God uses our lives, amen, ministry and service unto God. As we went out to uh, the streets to pass out flyers and invite people, the souls of men and women, yes, that's fruit that God wants us to produce, amen, as well. But um, really what God wants us to do is to become more like Him, amen. We need to imitate Christ, and so the Word of God is saying here that God wants us to be more like Him. That is the fruit that God wants us to produce you and I, in our personal lives. Amen. And so, uh, um, here, the, uh, last week, I spoke about that the fruit that does not bear, the, the tree or the, the branch that does not bear fruit, the Bible said he takes away. And we spoke about that and how taking away doesn't mean he just cuts it off and throws it away and burns it. No, it means that God begins to lift you up and begins to discipline your life and begins to challenge your life, amen, so that you will produce fruit, amen. And we said that one of the things that 
causes people to be unfruitful and not have fruit in their lives, of course, is sin. We know that sin, it, it will just, uh, you know, cause the branch to not produce. But today, here, we're, we're going to talk about uh, the second part of what Jesus is talking about in this scripture. First, he says, the branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He lifts up. And uh, because God is our a loving father, he wants to see change in our lives. He wants to bless you. And he wants to help you. And he wants you to have his joy. And he wants you to have his peace. Amen. So now, the scripture says here, the branch that does, that does bear fruit, some fruit, he prunes. Amen. He prunes. And so today, I want to speak about that uh, today regarding the pruning that takes place in our lives. The pruning that takes place in our lives. Um, the most fruitful and the most joy-filled Christians are the most pruned Christians. Um, when we are seeking to have a, the, a life that God wants you to have. Amen. When you and I, as we're here today in church, I believe that you're here today because you want more of God. Am I, am I right this morning? Amen. Uh, I, I believe that because you're here today, you want more of God, and you want God to minister to you. You want God to use your life, and you want the blessing of God on your life. Because if that's not the case, you wouldn't be here. You would be at home uh, watching, not football, because football's not on. You'll be watching the cooking channel. I don't know, something. I don't, I don't like the cooking channel. I don't watch that. But... Uh, you would be doing something else. But no, I believe that you're here today because you want more of God. And because you want more of God, amen, what you're saying to God today is, God, I want you to prune me. The Bible says those that bear some fruit, God prunes so that way he can have, they can produce more fruit in their lives. Amen. If you, do, if you have done any kind of gardening, I'm not a gardener. I know some gardeners. Um, if you've done any kind of gardening uh, at, at home, you know that uh, people will prune their trees and they will prune their plants, uh, take away those branches that are dead sometimes, you know, uh, take away those branches that are just running wild and they're not producing a whole lot, and it begins to prune them. So that way that tree or that plant can begin to produce and be healthier and have more in that, in that tree or that branch. And so today, I believe this day that God wants to do the same thing for us. He wants to take away some things in our lives, and he wants to uh, uh, cut away some things in our lives, amen, so that way we, we can add room, we can make room, God wants to make room for us, so that way he can add to our lives, he can help us in our lives, he can bless us in our lives, the first thing, um, the first thing that Jesus speaks about here, he says the the, the, the branch that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away, but the one that does bear fruit, he prunes. Amen. Let's read that scripture. It says, And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Amen. So, God, the word of God says here that he begins to prune our lives, amen, so that way we can be, begin to bear the fruit that he wants to see in our lives, amen. His plan in our lives that, is that he, we would be more fruitful him, for him. And I thought about the word fruitful, and the word fruitful means success. I think all of us want to be successful. We all want to have more in our lives. We want to see uh, the best of God in our lives. So the Bible is saying that what we're doing is that what God's going to do for us is that he begins to prune our lives. His plan is to prune us, 
to take away those things that are unproductive, things in our lives that may not be uh, product, productive for us. And so I was thinking about myself in the 30 plus years that I've been a, a, a Christian, that I've been saved, that I gave my life to God, uh, God is still pruning my life. God is still at work in my life. God is still cutting away some things that God needs to take away in order for my life to become what he intends. God wants, me, wants to prune away some things in my life so I can become more like him. Um, God wants, me, wants to be, me to be a, a better Christian. So he begins to prune my life. He begins to take away things in my life. Amen. God, uh, uh, he wants me to be a better husband to my wife. So what happens? God sees my life. He says, okay, we need to take this away. We need to take that away. If he's going to be, a, if he's gonna be the, the man that I want him to be, then I'm going to have to prune his life. Amen. I'm going I'm to have to take away some things in, in his life. So throughout the years, God's been pruning me. It's been over 30 years that I've been saved. And uh, as God had to prune me more and more in my life so I can be the father that God has called me to be. So I can be, uh, become a better father to my daughters amen, and grandson now. So, uh, so I can be a better person, a better parent. And I believe that today God is working in my life, continues to work in my life so I can become a better husband, a better father, a better pastor. I'm not the same pastor that I used to be when I first became a pastor. Throughout the years, it's taken 30 years, 30 years, um, almost 30 years, 29 years, um, that God, when the first time that we, we became pastors and we were in the state of Texas and I'm not the same pastor that I was back then. It's been all these years God has been cutting away and taking away some things in my life so I can become the person that God wants me to be. Um, and so, uh, so now the pruning in my life never stops. You have to understand that. That as you are saved and as, you, uh, as God calls you to be the person that God wants you to be, the pruning is going to continue and continue and continue if you want more of God. And that's what you said in the beginning of this message. That's what you, everybody said, amen. And you want the blessing of God, amen. And so God's going to continue to prune you and take away and cut away some things in your life because we can never say... I'm done, Lord. No. There's always going to be some things that God wants to take away from us. Amen. And there's some, uh, His purpose is for us to, to cut away some things that may not be good for us. Amen. And it made me think of the story of Moses when God called Moses. And Moses was out there in the desert by himself. That God, man... God was cutting away and cutting away and cutting away because God had an amazing plan for his life, amen? And so God had to cut away a lot of things in him. So that way he was preparing him to have this amazing task, this amazing mission, amen? And so I think that today God wants to cut away from your life so that way you can become the person God wants you to be. Um, and so I believe that for today, even as Christians, as we're here today, uh, man, God wants, to, wants the best for us. Amen. Do you want the best that God has for you? Amen. And so today, God is doing the same thing for all of us here. As we're sitting here today, God wants to cut away just like uh, God has done the same for me. He wants to do that for all of us today. He wants the best for us. Amen. And so throughout the years of my life, God has been cutting here, cutting there. And, and if I say, God, I want more of you, God says, okay, I'm, let's do this. 
and he's been doing that, and he's been doing that in my life. Amen. For, the, for, for all of us here today, you have to understand, I want you to picture this. There's a vine right there. Beautiful branches. Beautiful. Nice leaves. Golden, golden green. Bright green leaves. And sometimes, God says, you have some fruit. Your basket looks good. But you need, you, you're gonna, I want you to bear more fruit. That's what the scripture says. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it bears more fruit. Um, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking how sometimes uh, in a grapevine, in a grapevine, the, the branch may look beautiful, it may look very beautiful, branches everywhere, and in there, there's some, there's some fruit in there, but there's so much branches and, and wild branches and all these different things that the, that the vine gets really bushy, and that's why there has to be some cutting away, so that way, as you cut away some of those branches, the sun comes in, and as the sun comes in, it begins to bring life to that branch, and it brings and it brings vitality and strength, and, and it begins to grow because it needs the sun. But when there's a lot of branches, that it, it can happen to that, it, it, you know, it can prevent it from growing more fruit. And I thought about how sometimes as Christians, when we're in church, we look good. We may look great. We may look great, and, and that's good for us, amen, and we may look nice and everything, but God says, look, there's some things in your life that I want, you, I want to take away. There's, uh, there's some things in your life that maybe your priorities are a little off. You know, I was reading that, and it says, what causes, uh, um, what causes an unproductive life? In a, in a believer, and it said priorities. Maybe our priorities are a little crooked, and God says, I want to I wanna change those priorities in your life. Amen? Maybe you're doing some things in your life. They're, they're just, uh, they're, there are some things that you're doing as a Christian that are causing some unfruitfulness in your life, or you have some fruit, but you can, uh, pro you can have more fruit in your life. And there's all kinds of things. I was reading about um, how sometimes, I was reading about a man that, um, yes, he had a great job, but at this job, he was uh, working day and night, and not only that, but he was taking extra work upon himself, and he was um, uh, just didn't have time for his family anymore. See, that's unproductive, unproductive. Great provider, but not a good father, good husband. And so those are things sometimes that as Christians, as believers, that can happen to us. And now we live in the modern age of technology, which is beautiful. Technology makes our lives a lot easier. Thank God for technology. Yes. But technology can also become a, can become a stumbling block for some people. Amen. Some people will get on, get on their social media and they'll spend hours and hours. Now, not only do we have Facebook and Instagram and all the rest. Now we got TikTok. Man, I use TikTok. I loaded it up before all of you guys did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I, I started watching. I go, oh my gosh, I'll never stop watching this thing. It never stops. TikTok has video after video after video. It never stops. And before you know it, you spent already like two hours just watching videos of other people that don't know you, never seen you, never heard of you. And it's okay. I mean, it happens. But can you imagine all that time you could have invested maybe, uh, I don't know, doing something productive? Maybe called someone? Uh, maybe uh, encouraged somebody? Maybe read your Bible? And those are the things that sometimes God wants to cut away from our lives. Yeah, God says, son, daughter, you do have some fruit, but I want you to bear more fruit. And I, wa I want to challenge you, maybe cut your social media for some time. Cut it off.
You'll live without it. You used to live without it. It was, I mean, when I, I was a teenager, we didn't even have cell phones. I had a pager. Then I had to find a phone booth if the pager went off. And some of you have never seen a phone booth. My gosh, am I that old? Um, and maybe there's some things in our lives that God wants to cut away because God wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to have all these different things. He wants you to bear more fruit in your life. He wants you to bear, be a, a greater man or woman of God. And maybe there's some things in your life that God says, I need to cut away some things. And I don't know what they are. Only you know. And I was thinking, I said, Lord, what are the different things that today people might be cause unfruitfulness? So I said, oh, social media is one. Another one's too much work. Another one I thought about this is worldly music. Music that's of the world. Yeah, it's good. People listen to it. It's got a nice beat and all that. It's cool. You can listen to whoever you're going to listen to. But you have to understand that after you listen to that over and over and over again, it's got a little message. It's a little message that you've been hearing and it's going around in your mind. It's like, it's nothing, Pastor. It's not a big deal. Just listen to what it's saying. Listen to what you're listening to. You know what it does? It affects your relationship with God. It affects your view of God. Because the message that is being portrayed is anti-God. It's an anti-God message. The message is against God. And today, a lot of our generation of Christians, young people, are getting worldly music and they're, they're indulging in it and they're listening, in it and listening to it. So now that's why there's no need for their Bibles, there's no need for prayer, there's no need for any of those things. Why? Because that message is just taking over you. And it's not just for young people, it's for all, all kinds of ages. And so there's a lot of different things that will cause... Uh, um, unfruitfulness. God wants to bless you, I mean, God wants to help you. Um, and I, I read, I, I, I wrote this one down. Overspending can keep you from being faithful to God, and overspending can keep you from being faithful to your commitments. Um, those are just little things that can keep us from being faithful to the Lord and being faithful uh, unto God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why am I preaching this? Because God wants us to be fruitful. And man, everybody's different. God is dealing with each and every one of us in different things that he wants us to cut away or priorities that we have in our lives. I just wanted to mention these, just four of them, and pray that God would minister to you and God will help you today. In the Gospel of John chapter 15 in verse 1. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. I was reading the story about Hannah uh, in, in the Bible, in the book of Samuel. I'm not going to put it up there for you. And how she, for several years she could not have a child. And how in that time there was a pruning process that was taking place in her life, in her heart, in her mind. And how God was just beginning to work in her. And the plan of God is the same thing for us today. He, God is the one that does the pruning. It's only God that does the pruning. Nobody else does it. His plan, one plan does not fit everybody. God works in our hearts and in our, li in our lives in a very unique way. I want, you, I want you to understand this today. The way God works in your life, it's very unique. It's very personal. It's, it's a tailor-made plan. You have to understand this. God wants you to be the person, that, the man or woman that God wants for your life. But God is going to work in us in a very specific way, in a very uh, personal way, in a very tailor-made way. You have to understand, God does not work with us uh, uh, you, uh, the same 
God's going to work with us in different manners and in different ways. His plan does not fit all. God is like a well-skilled surgeon. Very delicately, He begins to work in your life and in, and, in your li- and in your heart so that way you can become the man or the woman that God wants you to be. And so, in that time that when God is working in you, as, as He wants you to produce more in our lives, um, the process that is taking place in us as He's working in our hearts, sometimes it can feel a little uh, um, painful. As God is working in your heart and in your life, amen, you can feel even... Uh, um, you can feel frustrated as God is working in you. Um, you may feel even uh, um, uh, some, uh, some depression. As God is working in your hearts, so that way he, he, uh, he, he wants you to be the person that He wants you to be. And sometimes you're going to feel... Uh, angry like god what are you doing to me god um why am i feeling like this you don't feel like that and so sometimes when we um when god is working in your heart let me let me share this with you when when god is working in your heart sometimes some people get mad at God. Have you ever seen how when they prune a tree? You ever seen how they prune a tree? What do they do? They get these big scissors. They're called shears. And they go like this. And they start cutting branches. My wife always tells me, look at that branch. It's running really wild. I like it like that. No, t- c- cut it down. So I go and get my, either my saw or my shears and I cut it. And so when God is working in your life, God is the vine dresser. The almighty God, the creator of the universe, the one that spoke the world into existence, the one that has the wisdom that uh, God is wisdom. He doesn't have wisdom. God is wisdom. God is wisdom. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes the pain that we feel when God, when you don't understand something, when you're frustrated, can it be that God is working in you? God is working in you so that you can become the man or woman that God has called you to be? Uh, I was reading a story about this man. He was already married, had his children. And he came back home. He had not spoken to his father for some time. And he came back and he says, you know what? I came back today. Listen to this. He said, Dad, I came back to say I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me. He he said, why? He said, because when I was growing up, you were a little tough on me. And I kind of hated you for it. And I was mad at you for it. But now I understand why you were mad at, why you were kind of tougher. You wanted me, wanted me a, a stand-up guy. You wanted me to be a good man. And so you were kind of rough on me. You were kind of tough on me. And, but now I understand, now that I'm a father, he said, I understand what you were doing. And so he said, I'm sorry, forgive me. Can it be that sometimes we can go to God and say, God, forgive me. Lord, I was mad at you. I don't understand it. I felt hurt. And God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being mad at you, Lord. I know that you were trying to work in my heart. I didn't didn't see it at the time. I was confused. Um, so 
I believe that God wants you and I to, to work in, in our lives. Amen. He wants, he wants you to bear fruit. Amen. He wants us to bear fruit. But sometimes we don't understand the process. It's a pruning. Man, pruning. Oh, I'm pruning. That's, that's pretty. That's, that's nice. Pruning is cuts. Cutting. Pruning, pruning is cutting. Um, so what do we do in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 4? The Bible says, in the gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 4, it says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. The pruning in our lives that takes place, amen, uh, can sometimes feel overwhelming. You can feel discouraged. You can be, feel depressed. You can feel angry. You may feel like, man, um, what's going on? Amen. What is going on? So what do we do uh, when we feel like that? One of the things that you do is you ask God for wisdom. You ask God for understanding. That's one of the first things that you got to do. God, I don't understand this. Um, I think there's many times people uh, may be feeling certain things in their lives and they feel like, man, God, am I in sin? Listen to this. This is pretty powerful right here. When you feel, when you feel like, man, God, I don't get it. Why am I, why do I feel like this? Am I in sin? I've asked myself that before. God, am I sinning? What, what's going on? Why do I feel like this? It's not that you're sinning. Only you know that. But it's God working in your life. And as, you God, as God is working in your life, we need to ask God for understanding. And we need to ask God uh, for, uh, for wisdom. And second of all, what you do is you submit to that. Amen. You, you submit to the, to, to the plan of God. Um, the quality in the, in the quantity of the harvest in our lives depends on our submission to the vine dresser, to God. Amen. If you and, you and I want to see the blessing of God in our lives, what do we do? We submit unto God. We come under the, the, the authority of God and say, God, I don't know what's going on, Lord. I don't understand everything. All I do, God, is that I'm going to trust in you, and I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to submit under you, man. And the, the Bible says here that uh, God is the vine dresser, and, and it's important that we, we submit under God. We submit to the, to the authority of God. And um, another thing that we do, the Bible says here, is that you abide. You abide in the vine. What does that mean? It means that you stay close. You stay close to the vine. You continue uh, connected to the vine. Who is that? It is Christ. It is important that we connect with God and that we submit to God and we abide to God. Amen. Because we may not know what's going on. We may not understand it. And God wants us to bear a lot of fruit in our lives. Amen. He wants us to bear more fruit. And because we feel a certain way, uh, God is the one that's working in our lives, so we need to abide in Him and submit to Him. And so as we, as we do that, amen, um, as we do that today, we're going to have the platform come up right now and as I'm closing up here. What happens? What happens to us? We don't understand it. We don't understand what God is doing sometimes. We, our feelings are a little strange. But God wants us to bear fruit. God wants more of us. God wants to do more in our lives. So what do we do? God, give me wisdom. God, help me to submit under you. God, help me to abide in you. And so the Bible says that, that as we do that, that God prunes us so that we will bear more fruits. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? It means that, that as you are submitting to God, amen, 
God begins to do an amazing work in your life. God begins to do some amazing things in your heart. Amen. As, as you are submitting to the Lord in those areas of your life, amen, God is just preparing you, preparing you for greater things. I was th thinking of the story of King David. King David, um, he was a man that as God worked in his life, God was preparing him to be the king of Israel. Man, all kinds of crazy things were happening in his life. Crazy things. But he submitted under God. And I believe the same thing for us today. Some amazing things God is preparing for your life. For you and me. So as we prepare to God, prepare our hearts for the Lord, God's going to do some amazing things in your life. Change lives. Um, change hearts. Transformed families and, and marriages. New workers. Amen. New ministry. New people. Why? Because we're abiding in the vine. And we're allowing God to work in our hearts and in our lives today. And uh, today, God wants to work in your life. Um, so this morning, we're going to stand to our feet. As we stand to our feet. The pruning process that takes place. It don't feel good. We may not understand it. But in that time, God is just working in our lives. We may not understand God. You don't have to. All you have to do is trust Him. Listen to me. Maybe you're in that place in your life right now. God, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm doing everything that I know to do. Have you ever felt like that? God, I'm doing everything you asked me to do, Lord. And still things may not seem the way I want them to be. Um... In that process, all that God is asking you to, you to do is to trust Him. To trust God. Trust Him in this process. It doesn't feel good. Don't get mad at God. And if you've been mad at God, it's, it's time to say, God, I'm sorry. God, help me, God. Forgive me, Lord. And we submit to the call of God. So today we're going to sing a song. And as we sing this song today, uh, I'm going to open this altars. If you want to come and find a place of prayer, these altars are open today as we sing a song this morning. In the name of Jesus. I need you. Hallelujah, my God. In the name of Jesus. To soften my Have your way, heart. God. Thank you, Lord. To break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping Thank you, my life. Thank you, God. Oh, all I Hallelujah. am. Oh,
understand God. His wisdom is way beyond ours. We don't have to understand Him. Sometimes the feelings of frustration, can it be that God is just working in you? He's trying to cut away some things so that way you can become more, bear more fruit. Amen. And once we realize that, we say, God, here I am, Lord. I don't understand it, but here's my life and um, work in my life amen and you can you just allow God to do that God does the rest and you become that beautiful person that beautiful man and woman that God wants you to be why because God you have invited God to change you to do more of you amen and but he's gonna cut away he's gonna do that and so as we do that God does the rest for our lives amen uh, Wednesday we do have our midweek service in the back Bible study. We invite you to be a part of that this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, praise God. And uh, the ministry meeting that we have scheduled, we will give you a date uh, sometime during this week. God bless you. You are dismissed. Greet one another this morning.